My name is David. I'm going to talk about Spanish culture. Does your culture have any national dish? If so, what is it? We have paella, which is some rice with seafood. Are there any common foods that you eat in your culture? We have um, saichi <laughs> papa, which is uh, fries with uh, sausages. Are there any foods that you cannot eat? No. Do you speak a dominant language in your religion, in your religion culture, or is there a religion that you follow? <clears throat> no. Is there anything you can say in your language? I can fully speak my language. Do you have any cultural clothing? No. What do you wear to specific events? Whatever you want, really. What traditions or customs do you have? Um, before going to bed, I have a shower because it's really hot there. And yeah. Is there anything you would like to tell everyone about your culture? Um, um, we're very good at football and we're going to win the Euros. Hi, I'm Miss Marshall and I'm going to talk about um, heritage on my mum's side, which is Bermudian. Does your heritage have a national dish? Uh, a national dish. Um, Bermuda is known for its onions, really randomly, and also its rum. Um, but a lot of the food or most of the food is imported because it's such a small island. What common foods do you eat in your culture? Um, I'm not sure there's any common foods. When my mum talks about the stuff that she really enjoys, it was quite often milkshakes or like the rum, the different cocktails with the rum in it. Are there any foods that you are not permitted to eat? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Do you speak a dominant language or is there a religion that you follow? Um, so the language is um, English, so it's a British territory country. Um, but it's it got independence, so it's got its own government. Do you have any cultural clothing? Um, yeah, so Bermuda's known for Bermuda shorts. Um, so they are like chino shorts that you wear down to the knee. Um, and businessmen wear them through spring to in the summer because it's so hot. And the reason I think it's become a big thing is because they wear shorts and they wear long socks up to the knee with sandals. So it's quite a look. Mm. What do you wear to specific events and why? Um, I'm not sure that other than the Bermuda shorts, that there's anything specific that they would wear. What traditions or customs do you have? Um, there's different traditions and customs for different things. So like we just um, had Bermuda Day at the end of May um, and that's usually just kind of everyone has the day off and there's boat parties. Um, cricket's a big thing and they have um, something called cup match in July, which is where two ends of the island compete against each other in this massive like four day cricket event. And it's kind of like a carnival. Is there anything you would like other people to know? Um, no, not many people know where Bermuda is. Um, they think it's part of the Caribbean, but it isn't. It's much further north. It's a tiny little island. You might have heard of the Bermuda Triangle. So people think that when you fly to or over Bermuda that you're going to get lost in some sort of mythical, I don't even know, but I've been to and from and I'm here, I'm fine. Um, and it's beautiful and it's known for its pink sand. So we have pink sand beaches in Bermuda. Our national dish is rice um, and we normally eat halwa and samosas for Ramadan. Um, we speak Somalian. Um, for example, um, um, we, we, wear, we wear cultural clothing called batis that we go to sleep with. Um, you have to do some as well. Bro. And then there's something called, like in our religion, there's something called Eid. Um, and usually we have like traditional clothing. So like, for example, so boys wear something called kameez. So it's like a long, it's not a dress, but it's like a long, like a long like shirt or so, yeah, something like that. And then they usually wear that. And then girls usually wear something called abaya. It's a long open, like a um, cardigan. And then we usually like in the morning, you usually go and pray at the mosque and then and after that, you literally just suffer with your parents. When you go to Somalia, there's very nice seas there, and there's very nice food, and you can see all the camels. 
um, there's very there's a lot of animals there. Hi, I'm going to talk to you about Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is located in southern Africa. It borders South Africa in the south, uh, Mozambique in the east, Botswana in the west, and Zambia in the north. Um, it's a country of about, um, I would like to say, about 15 million people. Um, it's a country that's been ravaged by AIDS and um, a lot of unemployment. Um, but it's a great country. It's a country I love dearly. The hospitality and the welcome of the people is uh, phenomenal. Um, you'll never be lonely in Zimbabwe. People are, will always be your friend. Um, they, there are two main languages in Zimbabwe. Well, three main languages. There's English, Ndebele and Shona. And things like the news and all major broadcasts are done in all three languages. Um, so the news can go on a little bit long um, because they'll do it in one language and then they repeat it in the next language and again in the next language. Um, so um, the languages are very different. Um, a traditional food in Zimbabwe is uh, sadza nyama, sadza being a maize meal. And nyama is meat or you could have relish or delele or some other kind of a spinachy dish um, if you can't afford meat. Um, love sugar. They um, they are, have a sweet tooth. And so if you go to somebody's house for tea, they'll put in extra sugar, um, which was always a problem for me because I don't take sugar in my tea. Um, but you would never refuse because that would be rude. Um, some of the customs in Zimbabwe are very different to the customs you have here. So um, one of the customs is it is not rude to walk between two people talking um, because that shows that uh, they're not talking about you and you're not talking about them. So that's one of the customs. So it's not seen as rude. Um, it's also polite if you get a gift to hold your hand um with your hand that is receiving the gift um as if to say the gift is so heavy that i can't receive it with one hand i need two hands to hold this gift um what are the other customs um in zimbabwe often the man walks in front um and the woman might walk behind maybe carrying all the baskets and the children and all the luggage or whatever um and that is not a that's just one of the customs and it's more about um the man traditionally was then able to see off anything that came to attack them um and uh so his hands were free um as i say it is a warm sunny place lots of wildlife the largest elephant population in the world um so many elephants though that they become a problem um, Victoria Falls is there, uh, the Great uh, Zambezi River, and uh, the Lim so it's bordered by the Zambezi in the north and the Limpopo in the south. Um, and that is Zimbabwe, and that's where I call home. Thank you. Merhaba, benim adım Murat. Bugün sizlere Türkiye anlatacağım. Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you about Turkish culture. Does your culture have a national dish? If so, what is it? Well, my favourite dish is Kuli Skender, which is made out of meat and bread with yoghurt. What common foods do you eat in your culture? There are not any common foods in our culture. Are there any foods you are not permitted to eat? Well, in Islam, we're not allowed to eat pork, which is basically the same in Turkey. Do you speak a dominant language or is there a religion that you follow in your culture? So, Turkey is an Islamic country, is an Islamic country and most people follow it, follow it. What traditions or customs do you have? Well, there is an Islamic tradition in Turkey, which is to go to mosque every Friday afternoon. Hi guys, Miss Grierson here, obviously supporting Scotland. Uh, Falsha Gualba, which means welcome to Scotland. In Scotland, we speak Scots Gaelic, uh, very similar to Irish Gaelic. Similar language with similar words. 
Um, famous things from Scotland, haggis, iron brew, tablet, whiskey. Um, we like to wear tartan and each clan has its own tartan. Uh, I've got my ancient uh, hunting McLean tartan. This is the red one and my face mask is the ancient tartan, which is green. I'm from Clan McLean, uh, which dates back to about the 13, 1400s. Um, the clans often fought a bit like families, uh, brothers and sisters fight, and uh, they would then claim land from one another. Scotland, as you know, is part of the United Kingdom. Uh, some of the most northern parts of Scotland, the Hebrides, are actually closer to Norway than they are to parts of Westminster. And they also largely speak Gaelic up there. Um, at school, I was brought up speaking Scots or English language, um, but we did learn lots of poetry about a really famous poet, Robert Burns who wrote lots in the Scots language about the countryside, about the food, about community, and about what it's like to live in Scotland. So, any questions about Scotland, come and ask me. Unfortunately, we didn't make the Euros, um, but I'll be back in England on Sunday. Hi, I'm going to talk to you about my culture and heritage, which is Chinese. Does your culture have a national dish? What one is the, it? One of the natural dishes is dumplings and it's just um, a wrap with filled with different types of meat and vegetables. What common foods do you eat in your culture? We eat dim sum as um, a part of our culture. Are there any foods that you're not permitted to eat? No. Do you speak a dominant language or is there a religion that you follow in your culture? The main language we speak in China is Mandarin but some people can speak Cantonese as well. Is there anything you can say in your language? Yes. Do you want to say it? No. Nope. <laughs> do you have any cultural clothing? Um, in China, we do have cultural clothing. What do you wear to specific events and why? Uh, we wear the traditional Chinese clothing because it symbolizes our culture. What traditions or customs do you have? Chinese New Year. Hi guys, most of you know me, those of you who don't, my name is Miss Williams and if you can't guess from my glorious accent, I am from Wales. In your culture, do you have any food or drink that is most popular? Uh, so in Wales, we've got quite a rich heritage when it comes to food. Like food plays a really, really big part in gatherings, festivals, all kinds of different events in Wales. Typically, we have like really, really sweet foods, so things like Welsh cakes, bar of grit, which are like tea bread. We've got really weird foods as well, like lava bread, which is made from seaweed. It's quite nice if you like that kind of thing, otherwise, I'd stay away from it. But then we also have like cheese on toast is our national dish. Posh name for it is Welsh really a bit, but who doesn't love cheese on toast, right guys? Is there um, a food that is most common? Um, Probably our Welsh cakes. Like every single cafe, every supermarket you go to, you will be able to buy a Welsh cake. And they're really, really nice. Is there a dominant language or religion that is in your culture? Yes. So we are very, very lucky in Wales that we have our own language. So Dwi Shai can write. I speak Welsh. It is one of the oldest languages in the world. And it shares a very common root with some other major European languages like um, Italian and Latin. And it's fantastic. If you hear a fluent Welsh speaker speak it, it's one of the most beautiful languages in the world. And many of you who watch your football and your rugby would have heard our national anthem, Mahila Madai. That shows the power and beauty of Welsh language perfectly for me. So I have spoken with Welsh all through my life, and it is a glorious language. Is there anything you would like to say in your language? Um, Shumai, how are you? Uh, for any of Miss Williams, my name is Miss Williams. <laughs> um, I don't really know what else to say. This, uh, so we tried to write the tipping bar. Uh, the no. Is there any like clothing you wear to special events? And um, so. Typically, on St. David's Day, which is our national day in Wales, St. David's our patron saint, 
typically happens in primary school. We have a traditional Welsh costume for girls, which is like this really, really itchy red skirt. You have a little pinny, you have a shawl, you have a black hat as well. I'm not really sure where it came from. I just know it's something to do with old <laughs> women who live in North Wales, very, very traditional dress, which is kind of filtered out throughout the rest of Wales. Typically as well, young boys would dress up as miners because in Wales coal mining was one of our main industries and where a lot of our money came from. So as a slight nod to those, a lot of young boys would dress up as miners. And then we could of course have the traditional rugby jersey, which everybody will wear. Every single Welsh person has a Welsh jersey. Apart from that, is there anything you wear to a specific event? We, when we have our big cultural festival, so for example the Eisteddfod, which is held every year, it's a big celebration of music and Welsh culture, we have the, what we call the Bards, who are like a panel of poets and writers. They have a specific uniform they have to wear, they have white robes that they have to wear. But more traditionally, lots of Welsh people will wear a daffodil, a leek or a dragon, which are our national flowers, and then the dragon is our, what is right, goch, and can write is our national animal so typically people will wear that as a little symbol so you may have seen me walking around like got a little dragon on my lanyard for example or i wear a daffodil on security stick is there anything you would like to tell everybody about your culture when it comes to wales we are a very very proud nation and we love celebrating what makes us welsh we have a long history of writers poets singers most people just think of Tom Jones, which is true, he is a Welsh legend, but it goes beyond that. We are a very, very poetic nation, we are a very passionate nation, and we are more than just sheep and Welsh cakes. We love embracing other cultures and we want to spread that love, that diversity, and we want everyone to see themselves as Welsh, because in Wales, we are a family, we're not just people, we are one giant family and that's something that we want to spread globally. Okay. Hi, my name is Diana and I'm going to talk about my country. Does your culture have a national dish? If so, what is it? Yeah, we have so much, but my favorite is Vanessa. It's like, uh, it has uh, cheese in it. It's, it's delicious. <laughs> what common foods do you eat in your culture? Hmm? Common foods? Uh, it's like different. We have so much food. Are there any foods that you cannot eat? No. Do you speak a dominant language or is there a religion that you follow? Yeah, we speak Bulgarian and most of us uh, are Christians. Is there anything you can say in your language? Yeah, what do you need to say? You don't have to say anything. You can say, hello, my name is Diana. Zdravete, moti me Diana. Do you have any cultural clothing? Yeah, it's like folk dresses. What do you wear to specific events and why? It doesn't matter. What traditions or customs do you have? Like 3rd of March. It's a celebration because before uh, the Turkish was... Um, or dealt, there was in uh, like... There was like a president for us. Ah, uh, okay but we don't we didn't like it and after this like for 50 or uh, 50 years russians come and save us like this ah uh, so the third of march you celebrate this yeah and do you celebrate days like uh christmas day for yeah. example because you're a christian yeah yeah christmas uh everything easter yeah Hi, I am Dei Chanel and I am Tayon and we are going to talk to you about our culture and heritage which it is, is Jamaican. Jamaican. Does your culture have a national dish? If so, what is it? Um, so our national dish is ackee and saltfish which is like, um, so ackee comes off, it's grown off of trees and um, from what I know um, I've actually picked it so it's like on a really tall tree that you have to have kind of like a, it's like a really big hook kind of and you have to kind of get it from the tree um, and it's also, it's actually poisonous, so you have to like cook it correctly as well. Um, and then salt fish is like really salted fish. I'm not sure exactly what the kind of specific fish is, 
but all it's all I know is like it's very salted fish and then you kind of cook it down together. What common foods do you eat in your culture? In our culture, um, we eat jerk chicken, um, pork, bami, and um, a lot of other stuff. There's a lot of food. Yeah. Are there any foods that you are cannot that you cannot eat? No. Do you speak a dominant language, or is there a religion that you follow in your culture? In our culture, um, Christianity is mostly popular, and most people speak Jamaican Creole, even though um, English is our first language. Is there anything you can say in your language? Yes, but um, I don't want to say anything. Do you have any cultural clothing? Um, yes, um, in Jamaica we wear bandana, and on like specific events days we wear um, the Jamaican colours. What traditions or customs do you have? Um, so for, it's quite different for kind of each individual family in a sense. So for me, um, it wouldn't be necessarily taken as a, a tradition, but like from what I know of when I was born, I used to have like a really gold, like it's like a ban bangle or something. And it's like, I think it's made entirely out of gold. And I know that my sister has one and a lot of my other family members have those. And also some people get like their ears pierced when they're a baby as well. Is there anything you would like to tell everyone about your culture? So there's a few things. So with our flag, so the green represents um, the, land. the land. The yellow is the shun sunshine and the black is, um, is supposed to represent the people. Mm -hmm. And we gained independence from the British um, in 1962. So August, on the 6th of August, we celebrate um, Independence Day.